What's up guys and welcome back to the infamous project. This is going to be a little bit of a special video because hardly do we ever get to see work or even drive the stalker vert that's sitting behind me here. If you guys have been following my channel for a while. This is kind of one of the OG cars that really made the infamous project what it is today. It was one of the original builds that I did back in 2009. I've owned this car since 2003, 2002, somewhere in there. The car has history. If you guys haven't seen the videos on this car, whether they're the videos that I've done or the ones that Gearhead 704 has done, there's blog write-ups about this car online. It's been around for a while. Not always been in my possession because, well, I actually ended up buying the car back twice even. But today I figured I'm gonna show it a little bit of love because, well, I did drive it down the road with Gearhead. I did actually put the top down and I don't think he ever showed any of that footage, funny enough. But driving the car down the road, once it got warm, I was having troubles putting the car back into gear and I had put a really cheap, I don't know, AutoZone special. Like, I mean, that clutch cable was like $15 or something like that. And that was like with no discount. That was just like the price. But the original cable that was in the car, it buckled. Something happened, this car's got a center force clutch in it, so it is a monster to put the clutch pedal down. And I think that cable just gave out. And I think this clutch is too much for the cheapy AutoZone cable. So today I was actually going through some of the bins up on my shelves over there. And to my surprise, I found this nice clutch cable and it is, a Taiwanese clutch cable, so it's not Chinese. And I'm hoping that maybe it's gonna do a little bit better than what's in the car right now. So we're gonna get into a little bit of DIY in terms of changing out that clutch cable. I'm hoping that can maybe get the car outside. It does need a wash. It hasn't had a bath in a really long time. The tires are filthy, the wheels are dusty, and everything else. So stay tuned to a special episode because like I said before, Stalker Vert doesn't get very much love. Everybody loves this car, including myself. I love to hate it, but stay tuned. We're gonna get into this one here in just a minute. The infamous stalker vert and i always say i love to hate this car because it's an angry car it sounds angry it looks angry it drives angry and it's <laughs> it's a chore to drive and it's one of those ones that you mentally prepare yourself for and when you're gonna drive it you know you're gonna drive it and you're ready for anything that could maybe happen so this car is a chore to drive and mostly mostly because of the ride height this is a static drop guys like there's no air ride on this one and it sits almost as low as my silver dutch coupe underneath this cover does and it's actually aired out right now so these are both 18 inch wheels so that wheel is tucking a little bit more than that guy is but honestly not by much and well i'm driving on that so needless to say you got to be really careful hell i can't even get out of the garage here without putting some boards down and getting the car jacked up is going to be an issue itself so gonna have to get the car started up i've got the battery tender on it so there should be enough juice in there since it's been sitting for a while drive it up on some two by fours get the jack under it and hopefully get access to the clutch cable down in the linkage area off the bell housing get it our clutch fork and be able to swap everything out and hopefully we'll have a better clutch cable. So again, there's a center force clutch in this. That's another issue about driving this car. The clutch is an absolute monster. It gives you a leg workout. You don't wanna be stuck in traffic in it. The pros about this car is that amazingly enough, and everybody's always talking about tuning and drivability and all of those things, this car has no tune 
it is a mass air converted car, but it has no emissions. It has like anything that I could have stripped off this car is gone. First things first, this was an AC car. I stripped the AC off. I'm a little on the fence about that one where maybe I should have left it on, but it just cleaned everything up in the engine bay so nicely. You can see I don't even have a belt tensioner for my accessory drive, which would normally be bolted on here. I've removed that and I'm actually using the power steering pump as my tensioner. So what I do is I remove this bolt. It allows me to rock the power steering pump over, uh, putting slack, get the belt on, and then rock the power steering pump back, puts enough tension on the belt and keeps everything as it should. You're gonna notice back there, there are no heater core lines running off the water pump. It's actually capped off down there. Nothing on the firewall. We do not have any of our sensors on the backside here, thermactors and whatever they're called. Those are off, no EGR, that is gone. You can see how clean the engine bay looks when you rip all that stuff off. There is, funny enough, the only thing that this car does still have, and I'm not even sure why it's still down there, is the actual pollution pump. And maybe that was a belt thing. So funny enough, I've actually got one of those pulleys that Casual Customs likes so much that is for the smog pump delete. Usually I just delete that and run the shorter belt. But in this case, maybe I can put that pulley on and uh, rip that smog pump off and not have to worry about it, but it's just pumping out to the atmosphere. It's not doing anything. There's no vacuum balls. There are no charcoal canisters. There are, there's nothing guys. Like as much as you can strip off, it's stripped off. With that said, all those things are gone. When I first start the car up, it'll almost want to stall initially. It'll catch itself. I'm going to go through all this with you. And it, the throttle response isn't 100% there just because it's most likely looking for things off the EGR and all of those other lovely sensors that I've removed. But once the car gets up to operating temperature, um, there's no issues. So the car runs, drives, it does not stall. It idles great. It's got the blower, it's got GT40 heads, GT40 intakes, an E303, full exhaust, and runs and drives great with all of that stuff missing. Just throwing that out there. Could I squeeze more power out of it if I put a tune on? Absolutely. Do I care? No. This car is not going to make tra traction. This car isn't meant to go fast. This car is just meant to sound good and look good and put a smile on your face when you're driving it. That's the sole purpose of this car. So with that said, there's lots of things wrong with it. And I did the everything wrong with the Silver Fox here. This guy, honestly, so many people ask me, is this car for sale? Will you sell the stock or vert? No, I will not sell the car because I do not wish any of the problems or anything that's going on with this car on anybody else, especially when it gets to just driving the car the way that it is. So I'm not gonna tell you everything that's wrong with the car, but I'll rhyme off a few things off the top of my head, for instance, uh, my friend Charles actually swapped out the power steering pump uh, because it was going out. He accidentally put power steering fluid in it instead of ATF. And so the pump kicks in and it kicks out. So I'm hoping I can drain the power steering fluid that he put in there. And at that point, put the proper steering or, or ATF in, I should say, and hopefully get that, uh, that problem fixed because it's kind of annoying. Um, to be like, oh, I got power steering and oh, no, no, I don't. So that's an issue. Um, already talked about um, the clutch cable. So hopefully we're gonna fix that today. Uh, the convertible top, it's old, it needs to be replaced. The cables are snapped. The top is like, it's there, it's all in one piece. It's just shrunk. It's so old, this is an original 1993 top that's been put on the car. I've got rubbers that need to be changed seals that aren't in very good shape you know the body and the paint looks good there's a lot of stone chips on the front and all of that other good stuff but the rest of it shines up pretty nice but this is like a driver you know this is going to almost turn into like a rat rod one day the bearing in the steering wheel has a little bit of movement in there which annoys the hell out of me it's not near as bad as a lot of the other ones out there but it annoys me yes i upgraded the steering wheel to the airbag style. In fact, everything in this car has been upgraded to 90 to 93 style, including the rear plastics. There's shoulder belts in the back that have been installed. 
This is a 93 top. So I guess the seats aren't true 93 because they got the knee bolsters, but you guys get the idea what I'm going with. The cluster has been modified to look like a 9093. The climate controls have been upgraded. I got to get rid of that T-handle. I got to get rid of that monster tack. You know what? Maybe those will be a few more of the things that we'll do today. I want to pull the wiper motor off. It's not even plugged in. It's like, why would I have this here? I think I just really kind of don't want the hole there. Maybe I'll come up with something. Maybe we'll pull that off today as well. There we go, guys. If anybody's wondering about the front bumper cover, again, if you didn't already know, this is half stalker, half original factory GT. That's why I still have my VIN sticker on the bumper here. So the factory GT bumper was cut down here below the molding, the stalker lower lip, which is actually, this isn't a stalker bumper. This was from that shady company called ABC Exclusive that used to be in all the old 5.0 Mustang mags. And this was a piece of shit piece that they sold me. I couldn't even get the headlights in. These pieces up here were like dipping down like this. Needless to say, they wouldn't refund my money. They wouldn't send me a new one. So I made my own. And that's how the stalker bumper got on the car. With that said, I could probably talk about this car all day long. Let's get this thing started up, if it will fire up and get it up on some two by fours. There you saw it firsthand yourselves. Like I said, this car hasn't been run in probably at least a month. And even when I ran it then, I was just starting it up for somebody and that was it. So the battery is still a little weak, as you probably heard in terms of the initial rollover, but you heard it start up. A Little bit of a rough idle for a second. It actually, it didn't, sometimes it wants to stall a little bit more, probably when it's colder outside. Today being extremely warm, I don't think there was any issues but there you have it no tune got a bunch of mods on there you know it uh it runs pretty good so it smells real nice in here now got that oh to no cats all right so we get underneath here start plugging away at this clutch cable now funny enough i still have the factory quadrant in this car and it works a lot of guys run billet or the Steeda firewall adjusters and adjustable cables, this, that, and the next thing. I personally, I do not like them. I feel like sometimes there's a little bit of slack at the top of the clutch pedal. Sometimes I feel like depending on where they're adjusted, that cable pops off um, randomly. I've had that happen where people don't have the cables adjusted um, the way that they should be. And it's just one of those things, like when you need to adjust it, Firewall adjuster helps, you know, you can spin some stuff, you can, you know, give it some slack, you can tighten it up depending what's going on. But the adjusters on the underside where you gotta, you know, leave the, the cover off for your clutch fork, that's another pet peeve of mine. Guys, if you got the damn cover, put it on. Like, why do you wanna send potential more debris up in there? I know people probably argue and be like, oh, it's no big deal. Well, if you got a cover, just put the damn cover on. So. I'm gonna be taking my cover off. I know it's probably a little oily, probably got some debris on it, but we'll get that taken off. Uh, we will pop the clutch cable off the clutch fork right here. I'll just use a pry bar, pry the, uh, the fork um, a little bit, and that way um, I'll be able to put this on and we'll have to get the C clip, the retaining clip on, um, which I know a lot of people lose these retaining clips and I've seen people put hose clamps or gear clamps or all those other things on do as you wish but again get the right piece if you got it use it uh, then we'll route the cable up bolt it on the frame rail we'll get it out of the factory quadrant get it back on the quadrant and be good to go for testing so underneath the car here and i was looking oh the drain plug is a little wet the sway bars got some oil on it what's going on and i start looking up here and you can see that's actually the return line for the blower and for the oil. And the line's actually loose. See that? So nice little 
quick fix here will be to clean this up. Now guys, remember, this car is not a show car, this is a driver. That's why you see stuff like a zip tie holding up the wiring for the starter and all that type of stuff. Like, we're not, this car isn't by any means perfect in any way, shape, or form. You know, this isn't my silver coupe or one of my other builds. This here is just a get it on the road, get it functional, get it driving type car. And the funny thing is, I don't know if it's just because this wiring is too tight. Oh, it's because the wire tuck. So the wire tuck didn't allow me to get this back up on the engine block. So that's the reason why it is the way that it is. We got our power steering lines right here. So I'm going to try and knock this lower one off. I'm going to drain out as much of the power steering fluid as I can out of here. Okay. Ooh. See that color guys? That is the sign of the wrong fluid. Ooh. All right guys, so here I am trying not to make a mess and I just made a little bit of a mess because I want to try and get as much of that actual power steering fluid out of the system as possible. So what I'm doing is just blowing a little bit of compressed air through the main reservoir here. Is this actually the old PCV hose off of something? Just gonna go ahead here, stick it on the end. Now this should blow straight down into my catch bin here. So I got a little bit of ATF here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour some in and this way we can just kind of, it's probably good. We're just gonna flush that through the system. It's the same thing. I'll cover this, give a little bit of air. Then hopefully we start seeing the red fluid come out the hose side down there. You guys saw it firsthand, wrong fluid was in there. It wasn't red, so we know it wasn't ATF. So there you have it. I'm gonna go ahead, I'll get that buttoned up. I'm gonna drain the rest of the oil, um, get our oil change done. And from there, we'll move on to the clutch cable. That's the thing with Fox bodies, right? You start with one thing, and it's just like this domino effect of all these other things that you're gonna do. But I promise you guys, we'll get there. And then I'm sure by the time that I'm playing with the clutch cable on the quadrant, at that point, I'm gonna start like, cutting that tachometer and everything else out of there. So there we go, let's get this done. So we get this cover off that everybody loves to leave off. There you go. There you go. A little bit of persuasion. There you go, cable off. Whew. There. Feels like we're on the clip. Okay, so we're not gonna worry about this right now. We're gonna hook it on the clutch pedal before we hook it on here. New cable, our old cables in there is little quarter inch bolt. So we gotta get that off or screw, whatever you wanna call it. So we'll pull that off and then that'll give us access to get, um, get that cable off the quadrant. And funny enough, this guy doesn't have this piece. So I'm hoping I get to reuse the one that was on this old cable, which in that case, in reality, sorry, since I'm reusing it, that can stay on. So all I gotta do is actually just get the cable off the quadrant from the inside. There you go. Boom, cable is off. More up there. Oh, 
Sorry guys, I know I'm blocking the camera. There we go, the cable is in. Whew. So now that there's a bit of tension on here, I'm gonna go back up and I'm gonna put that sleeve back in the firewall area because I'm gonna need that in order to get the slack. All right guys, so you have your clutch pedal, your brake pedal, and then your gas pedal, right? And they all go up, up near your steering column and all that other stuff. So you gotta reach up in here. And the funny thing is your quadrant lives up over here on the right side of your gas pedal. So you have to reach up here and put your cable on, right? So if you actually look at the quadrant, the factory one, it's got all these teeth and it's like a semi-moon like this. And what happens is there's another little bracket like this that's sitting down here. So what happens is this guy engages in these teeth and it clicks. And that's how as your cable stretches, this is gonna move and it's gonna click and lock itself into place and where it needs to be. And this actually works really, really well when they work. Sometimes, you know, the spring-loaded assemblies snap or you might lose some teeth on your quadrant from old age or brittleness. So what you gotta do is you gotta get your hand back on this guy and you gotta rotate it back. So you can get the teeth off and then you rotate, just get your hand up in there and rotate the quadrant down so it gives you more cable because the cable is attached up here going through your firewall. So what you want to do is you want to rotate it all this way so that way you get more slack in your clutch cable. Man, and this clutch is like butter compared to the one that I just took out. Wow, okay. Here's the one I just took out. It's all black. I don't know where it's made. It's got a steel housing, which I guess is kind of cool to a certain degree, but it just did not work properly with this car. Like it worked until the car would warm up and then it wouldn't want to work, or at least not enough to get the car into gear properly without having to try and ram it in there. So this guy is out. Now that everything is on, I'm gonna go ahead and put that cover back on over the clutch fork and we're going to be able to put the car back down. We'll carry on a couple of our other little mods and get this thing done. Ken, Mr. Blue Oval Media. This one, my friend, is for you. And you get rid of the big ol' monster tack. solution you got holes get the little Christmas tree guys and uh, just push them in there like that boom like obviously you got those two little clips there but it looks better than two holes that'll be until I get around to changing that cluster cover next thing I got to do is I got to get rid of that old t-handle honestly that t-handle it was one of the very first performance mods I ever bought as a teenager. I was at the Performance World car show back in Toronto. I must have been maybe 16 years old, maybe I was 15 years old. I don't even know, but I remember, I think I paid 
15 bucks for it or something like that. And I've had it on a variety of cars and it's just kind of followed through and followed through and it's going to come off. You know, it's, I'll probably just put it somewhere, hang it up as memorabilia. But um, yeah, it <laughs> uh, brings back some memories. It's what we did when we were young, tea handles and monster tacks. It's a little later in the afternoon and it is time to take this thing outside. I've got a couple boards strategically placed out on the concrete slab there. Hopefully my front tires can catch them strategically, one or both or whatever, and hopefully clear that lip coming off so the exhaust doesn't get hung up gone ahead and detailed the car inside so it's pretty shiny and looking pretty good but let's go ahead start this thing up and get it outside on its first maiden voyage in quite a while. Clutch cable worked as it should, our power steering worked. Doesn't look like we're dripping anything or leaking. And the car did really good, even in these 100 and, I think it's about 106 degrees outside right now. You know, our temps are getting up around 200, but you know, as long as I was moving, everything was good and it dropped back down. So really happy with that. And I gotta give the car a little bit more credit than I do. This thing went all the way across the US Albeit it was eight years ago for Mustangs across America, but still, this thing was like one of the very few Fox bodies that wasn't this low, but it's still this exact same drivetrain setup. So Corona, California at the Saline headquarters, all the way to Charlotte Motor Speedway in North Carolina. So car really hasn't seen that many miles since after the Mustangs across America trip. I had sold the car. That gentleman didn't really drive it for the year he had it. Then I got the car back and I've just been tinkering with it since. So. I'm happy to have done these few little things. I can cross off a few of the items that were wrong with the car 
and you know what it's all cleaned up managed to take it for a drive what more could i ask for so hopefully you enjoyed this little snippet on the stalker vert there's lots of exciting stuff in the pipeline to come and you guys are going to want to make sure that you're following along if you are not subscribed please make sure that you are turn on your notifications and all that other good stuff because there's some really amazing content coming for the rest of 2022. So again, as always, thank you for your support. We'll see you next time here on The Infamous Project.